Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. And as you know, today is Thursday. And as you know, on Thursdays, I typically have Mel with me. And Mel is here. He's in a vehicle. So if you hear noise in the background, that's not me, that's him. (laughs) But we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. And being healthy. And of course, if you don't know Mel's backstory, Mel is a personal trainer slash online coach slash, um, you name it, he doesn't. He's primarily working in the online space right now, wants to be completely working in the online space soon. And so without further ado, I'm going to let Mel taken away so I can quit gambling here. <laughs> we love hearing you. No worries on that, win. Hello, everybody. This is Mel Martin from Fit Love Strong. Yes, personal training is one of the things that I do. It's the, actually it's the foundation of my career. I've been a professional health and conditioning coach and strength coach for the last 33 years, and I've transcended into high-performance empowerment coaching. And I still do a little bit of one-on-one. I like the human connection uh, in a gym setting. It's just a lot of fun, and you can really get to interact with people. However, I I have a far more global and international reach now because I work with people from all around the world. So today's topic is going to be, I believe, entrepreneurship and staying healthy. Well, I'll tell you, it is ironic that we're talking about that because my cousin and best friend, who is also a professional coach in the same number of years as me, suffered a stroke this last Sunday. And he's been an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. And there are things um, that he could have done that probably would have helped not helped prevent this. And it doesn't matter what line of business you own or run. You are the business. Your personality is the business, and your effort is the business. And it's very important that you don't become your business. It's very important that you don't lose yourself in your business. And the way you do that is making sure you have healthy boundaries so that you are who you are, not what you are. You never want to. You never want your business to become who you are. Your business is just a conduit by which you can collect funds to afford you the lifestyle that you want. And hopefully that's the process that you're going through. If that's not your mindset and emotional connection to it, you're in trouble. Okay, so having come from, uh, uh, you know, some experience myself where I lost a million-dollar business that I was so obsessed over, which, you know, the amount of hours I put in was subsequently damaged my marriage and, and helped me, you know, lose four years of my son's lives as toddlers, I can tell you that it's so important that you take good care of yourself. Make sure you make time to exercise. Make sure that you're fueling your body and that you're eating for energy and eating for life. Make sure that you have some life and stress management tools to use, such as yoga and meditation and just peacefulness and nature walks and all that stuff, because you still have the most important relationship you have to maintain, which is, number one, yourself, number two, your loved one, be it a spouse, a partner, children, parents, whatever the case may be, close friends who rely on your presence in their life, and uh, all that good stuff. So, you know, physically you want to take care of yourself because you don't want to be a sponge that's held under a running faucet of stress and never wringing it out to renew itself so that it, it's strong again and then go back under the sponge and just constantly stay under it. Um, There are people that constantly sacrifice themselves for their success. That simply is not healthy. And uh, yours truly, I, I, you know, I run weekly, I work out. Even though I'm in this industry, it doesn't matter. If I didn't do that, then I'd be kind of hypocritical in a sense, but at the same time, I wouldn't be doing myself or my clients any service um, by not living the life I'm I'm trying to prescribe, right? Anyway, that in a nutshell is where we're is the direction we're going with. <laughs> that in a long nut show. Okay. <laughs> so as you guys probably know by now, I if you guys 
look at my schedule on my Calendly, which on my calendar, which I use Calendly as my system. Now, Calendly is a automatic calendar calendar system. So, if you notice, I am locked out from one thirty to about three on Mondays and Wednesdays. I that <laughs> is where I go to some place called the gym and work out in the echo. And so right. that is one of my um exercising days. And I also have a recumbent bike, you guys don't know that. I have a recumbent bike. It's a ten year old recumbent bike. But it is a recumbent bike and it still works and I try and try my hardest to use it on a weekly, if not twice a week, basis. Um the and I walk every single day. I use a walker. I have two flights of stairs that um on my house. My house is not handicapped is accessible in the least. I and people think that's amazing. I'm still doing two flights of stairs every single day. Just to me get to a vehicle, I have to walk up a flight of stairs, walk across a front hallway, which is about 20 feet, and then walk down a flight of stairs, and yeah. And so for me to get to my bedroom or even to the kitchen, I have to walk up a flight of stairs. So walking up a flight of stairs on a daily basis is great cardio. Believe it or not, it's great yes, cardio. Yes, it is. And please don't take my stairs away because I <laughs> know they've adapted in my lifestyle. And I make it a point to get out of my office. Now, my office is down at, at the bottom of the stairs. So, yes, I'm working at a stairmaster every single day, and I have a huge elliptical in my office that isn't mine but could be mine, essentially. And so I make it a point to do the stairs, a.k.a. my stairmaster, every single day day because I make it a point to when news hits, I make it a point to walk upstairs and have lunch or walk upstairs and have dinner. I am not sitting in my office, in my cave all day. And so I make it a point to put exercise on my schedule as a meeting. Just say this is what I'm doing from two one thirty to two thirty on Wednesdays, and yeah, and so I make it as a appointment on my schedule, even though it's appointment with PTs. It's actually appointment with myself because if you have a disability and lose control of your disability, yeah, it's not a pretty picture. I almost lost control of my own disability in March. And if you guys want to go back and listen to me losing control of my own disability, you're more than welcome to it. But I got a back brace, and my back is perfectly fine. Now, sitting against a wall and doing a podcast isn't the best for my back. So what I tend to do is either sit on a exercise ball, which they do make chairs with exercise ball inserts. You can find those on Amazon. Or sit in my bed with my back supported. And that's what I did today. So that's my you know, exercise routine. And hopefully it stays that way. And so... I will just do that 
because I'm not chasing kids. I will be chasing – no, I'm not. I almost said I will be chasing kids this year. No, I'm not. I am sitting down teaching them. And, no, I will be standing up teaching them. And so so this is a good year of me not um, chasing kids, and it's going to be a very interesting year of what um, – it should be a very interesting year of exercise and me not chasing kids. You know, it's a different shift, right? Even though you're not chasing kids, you still got to be accountable to your own health and fitness. I'm so glad that you're yeah. you're doing that, you know. It, and I'm sure that having a consistent and challenging physical fitness program has done wonders for your own creativity, your own inspiration, your own self-drive. I mean, can you imagine not doing it? I mean, I can. I cannot imagine having a sedentary lifestyle. And, you know, some people do, and that's fine. That's a choice. It's just the way it is. But there's only a positive thing can come out of implementing and starting a, a good, balanced health and fitness program. And all you have to do is meet your fitness level where it's at and progressively gain from there. So, yeah, it's, you know, well, it's, it's as an entrepreneur. I, as, I said, as I um, said, and I think I told you, it took me about a good four months to get in the exoskeleton using a Galileo tilt table, a.k.a. a Bible gym. That's all that is on top of the Galileo tilt table. If you guys look at the video, you will see a Bible gym on top of the um, plus on top of the winning Galileo field table, and so yeah, that's all that is. That's a Bible gym. It's useful as equipment. The Galileo field table is most of them <laughs> in a Bible gym. I mean, most gyms have gym, and I was so used to using one that they adapted it to me. I've been using a Bible gym, what, since I was 16, probably? Yeah, I've been working out uh, in a gym since I was 16. And at the time, people thought my mom was nuts because at the time, the disabled in a public gym, a thing you would see on a daily basis. It's still not. It's still not. But the way the Bridging Bionic set up, is set up, we want to be in a public gym. So people can see us walking the EXO and be impressed. Although we're right across a physical therapy department, so if anything were to happen where I would need a PT, the PT knows me well enough that she could assist, but I am essentially working out in a gym with every other person on the planet. That's awesome, right? I mean, you're not going to treat yourself yeah. any different from anybody else simply because, you know, yeah. you have, you're your drive and your motivation and inspiration is just the same as anybody else. It's not better. So, um, yeah, okay. I don't expect anything less from you. Sure, absolutely. And um, when my my dad was a solo entrepreneur in his days of being a solo entrepreneur, which wasn't that long ago, I mean, he took his lunch break and went skiing and went snow skiing. And, yes, I do go snow skiing, and that is great cardio in itself. So whatever you can do, just take a walk, people. Just take a walk. And you're like, oh, great. Oh, great. Win and Mel are telling me to go take a walk. Win and a fitness coach that she's wrangled into this podcast and <laughs> told or telling me to go take a walk, I'm like, right. oh, that doesn't right. seem appealing. 
Well, if you can start with walk, you can turn it into run. If you can, right. um, I know people that, I know, yeah, I know triathletes that part of their training is going for a walk and starting out for a walk and then going, running on the beach. And my teammate actually does that. And, well, she used to know that um, her body's not physically fit to do it anymore. And so, yeah. And so that's, you can just walk down to Starbucks. Sure. You don't have to get in your car. I know, uh, I know a person out in California. He's a lawyer by day and a Mac, a Macintosh geek by night. And he runs a very successful podcast, a very successful law firm. And what, and he'll, um, it meant this on the podcast. By the way, the podcast that he runs is called Mac Power Users, if anyone's interested. And he said what he does is ride his bike down to Starbucks. And this is in Orange County, California, by the way. And rides his bike down to Starbucks, then sits there and has a coffee and does an hour of work. Buys his bike home. You know, no excuses, right? And and we no we use excuses. The, we use, yeah, to, we use walking as to a get out of the house and as an action. And to, yeah, because it's let's just assume you don't have an exercise program, and if you do, awesome. Then, like I said, meet awesome. your fitness level where it's at. If you are a person already working out in the gym, then step up your training. If you've never worked out in your life, then start walking. You know, if you can't yeah. walk, then go yeah. somewhere where you can ride a bike. I don't know. There's always there's yeah. always some physical way you can do it. You found a way to do it for yourself. If you're an able-bodied person, I have a hard time accepting that you are not able to do it for whatever reason, even time consuming. I, I, I hear it all the time. I, I, I'm no. busy. I miss. I'm not. I'm going to come on. Really? If you really put everything you did on paper as far as the calendar, you'd be shocked as to see how much time you actually waste. You'd be shocked as to how much – it's almost like a budget and expenditure sheet, right? You'd be shocked to see where you actually spend money that you didn't realize you were that adds up to hundreds of dollars a month, you know? So yeah. if you're trying and to then, turn the fat off your budget, why couldn't you just do the same off your schedule and literally do the same off your life, right? So I don't and know. Then, it's just, that's why you that term. Um, I know there are mommy and me classes for those of you who have young kids. And for those of you who don't want the young kids to bother you during the year workout, I know there is kids gym and um, kids at athletic clubs all across the country. My two gyms have, yes, I'm a member of two gyms. One is a little defunct right now, but um, the other one I'm using that's where the EXO is. And I know that they have a kid's gym. They have had a kid's gym for, we won't remember, the AD, AD2. They have had a kid's gym almost for 30 years. Now, mm. my, wow. age, my age, because I used to go into that kid's gym. <laughs> That's how I know. And so... Mm -hmm. Most gyms have a kids-related gym, and mm -hmm. I don't know if Mel's a gym. Okay. Yeah. Hello. I, I, I'm here, but I don't know if Mel's gym um, has a kids' gym or kids' facility mm -hmm. that they can play on, or... Just take your kids on the bike to the park and let them play on the monkey bars while you uh, do heel raises on the bench. I don't, I don't care. I am sick tired of hearing the disabled, and this is my TSA. I'm sick and tired of hearing the disabled say I can't work out. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, if anything, you want to like, yeah. be a good role model for kids to be active. I mean, simple play is is simple enough exercise. And if you're if you're incorporating that with your kids along with, you know, the walking to the park and all that stuff, they're not going to know any different. They're going to think that's normal. I mean, I have two boys that are 15 and 17, and they play, they've watched me play, I don't know, countless tournament softball games. And I've coached all their, all their youth baseball and basketball sports. And now they're, you know, they're grown and they work out on a regular basis and play sports and they think that's normal. They only follow what they see as normal. You know, so, yeah, I mean, mom and me programs, you know, at the gym I freelance at called Rock Solid Fitness, oh, my God, the owner, Corinne Levin Messersmith, is due any day. She's due any day. And she still coaches hit classes. She still works out real hard. And she has two daughters that I believe are maybe 8 and 10 that are always running around exercising and, hey, I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do that. And it's a very kid-friendly gym. Now, you know, not all gyms are that way, but you can inquire to make it that way. You can find a gym that's that, that is that way. You can gather a group of moms and say, hey, let's, let's work out together, and you can find a, 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 a exercise professional out there that's willing to take you on as a group fitness program. There's many different ways to do it. You can just Google, you know, mom and me programs or exercise coaches who can do mom and me programs boot camps down, they'll put it together for you. Not very hard at all. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they make time to do it. It's fun, right? So, yes. anyway, that's what I see. And uh, my excuse, my excuse is not your excuse. I am a writer now, by train. I'll be in education for the next three years, but I'm still going to work out. I, even though I'm a writing, and even though I'm a writing book, I am still going to work out. As a matter of fact, Mel and I are talking about doing a fitness book for you guys because we're sick and tired of hearing <laughs> solo entrepreneurs are too busy to work out. The disabled doesn't have the man power to work out. Just grab your aid and just grab someone to go work out with you. Right. Just do it. You know, I have I have a, a really close friend of mine who's a restaurateur, and when you own a restaurant and you're the head chef, you are married to your business. And that's, a restaurant is the one business where you, you can absolutely have your time monopolized by it. And he always met me about three mornings a week at five in the morning, yeah, five in the morning, it worked out real hard with me. Now, you know, do you have to make it at that time? Maybe you do. I don't know. And if you are a disabled person, like Lynn says, get somebody who's able-bodied who's going to partner with you, set some goals with them, and challenge each other, you know, to improve your health and fitness. I mean, heck, if you worked out twice a week for a whole year with four weeks off a year for, you know, a couple weeks off for, cold, you know, for being sick, travel, vacation, and whatnot, that's 96 workouts. You can't – it's impossible – not to do 96 workouts in a year when there's 365 days. How is that possible to not do it? You know? And you're not, and yeah. you're, you're going to do more than 96. You're going to do more than twice a, twice a week. Once you get the momentum going and you gain traction in your workout program, I guarantee you're going to want more because you're, you're going to like how it feels. You're going to evolve, you know? So that's what I see. I walk every single day. You guys know mm-hmm. that. I walk every single day. I'm on a exercise ball, the, I need to get back on that exercise ball, speaking of, I am on the exercise ball when I write, and I use Siri, so call phone tunnels out of the question, you guys, don't be complaining to me that you have call phone tunnel, there, uh, I have a friend who starts complaining that she has call phone tunnel. And I'm like, you say more times than not. And she's, yeah, the business, she is, she's in real estate. And she uses email, sits in front of the computer like we all do. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. move, move and dictate 
move a nickname. You can dictate a book on a walk. Presently, you can dictate a book on a walk if you're that desperate. Yeah, yes. I've written chapters in a book <laughs> that way, sure. Oh, yes. that's creativity. Yes, that I have. Moving, right? I have created, I figured out my plot line. Now listen to this one. I was in the EXO on Monday and figured out a whole 20-chapter book in the EXO. In mm. the EXO. Nice. Walking in the exo. And my book is going to be called The Teacher's Tizzle, by the way. And so it's coming out in December. So uh-huh. I figured out a whole book in the exo. And that's because I was talking and multitasking at the same time. They, uh, they didn't know I could multitask and figure out. But I was stuck. I was stuck that um, that morning, Monday morning, as to how am I going to produce this book. I thought, well, let me just go walk in the Excel and see what happens. Do you know on today is Thursday, do you know on Tuesday I sat and wrote a whole outline and then Slowly but surely, filling in the chapters of the first draft of the book. Thank you, EXO. So mm-hmm. that is that. Right. You know, yes. You, yeah. When you're moving forward physically, or you're just, you've got your lungs and your heart working together, and you're pumping blood throughout your your muscles. You're you're not only doing it that way. You're pumping blood to your brain. You're flushing healthy blood to your brain and circulating it throughout your body. And your best creativity does come out because you just feel good, you know. I mean, I'm not saying you couldn't get creativity out of feeling negative. Well, then you're going to have negative creativity, right? <laughs> but if, you, if yes. your purpose, if your intent is to provide great content in anything that you do, oh, my God, there's no greater way to release that, that content creativity than exercise. And if you do it on a consistent basis, it's easy to recruit that out, you know, within yourself. Or it's the other way around. You may have too much chatter going on in your brain, and you absolutely need to let let it go. Working out is a great way to do it because you can feel all those emotions that are tied to those thoughts and just release them instead of having them so bottled up inside you. That's the difference between yeah. having life happen to you or having life go through you. You always want life to go through and you because you're just... A bo- you're just an energy. That's all you are. You're a consciousness. And That's if you don't, if you, if you get too wrapped that, up, yeah, you you say wrap that. up too much in the physical side of it, then you're really not. You're really not. You know, maximizing your potential. You know. So anyway, just my thoughts. That's interesting that you say that because I have a friend going through a very horn situation. Uh, yeah, it just came to to a head as um, yesterday. So what did she do? She came up here and helped me and then went back to her house and then proceeded to go to her community center and work out. And oh, wow. was in a much better mood when she came um, this morning. And she oh, okay. was in a much better mood. And so right. I think, I know, I think, I think, I know that Mel's right in saying, when you're having a bad day, just go one day. Mm-hmm. Totally. It takes a couple minutes to go for a walk. Stretch and breathe. Walk. So, you know, tell yourself no more. Go walk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So easy to do. And it's cheap, right? It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> you know? Set on a lot. I'm sorry. On your phone every three walk. hours. Go for a walk. Easy to do. Listen, listen to a podcast. And now these, um, including my EXO, one of my, one of my EXOs is now controlled by a iPod 
cut, believe it or not. And I um, I think that's pretty cool that they use a technology to control robot. And they said, if my tone gets to the point where I can get in this exoskeleton, in this indigo exoskeleton, I will be able to see it. Now, we're not there yet, but we have been progressing over the years to get me in to the exoskeleton week. So I'm very hopeful that my tone will um, decrease, not increase, over the time span of working out. Now, what I did is I gave up um, excess sugar. I gave up excess sugar, i.e. the cake, the candy, everything else. And so that, yeah, I've been doing that since Sunday. I did have a best body, but I don't think that has too much to do with it. I'm not giving up caffeine, you guys. (laughs) Caffeine? (laughs) Caffeine and me, yeah, but I'm not giving up caffeine, especially as a writer, especially as a school teacher. I can't give up caffeine. And so um, that's all in the podcast in itself, how they got me to eat all of food. That's a whole other podcast in itself. But over the um, years, I have decided that my own body hates sugar. And it oh. started to reject it so bad, and I wasn't really? paying attention until last week when it goes, okay, you don't pay attention, so we're not going to move. <laughs> and literally, mm-hmm. my my body literally stopped moving. Wow. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, I I get the picture. My, my tone was so bad, my joints ached like there was no tomorrow, like I was 80 year old with CP, and that's because I was eating refined sugar. Yes, now refined sugar is still in this house, I just don't eat them. Ah, willpower, you have discipline. Good for you. <laughs> willpower and discipline. Willpower and discipline. So, um, yeah, so that's my latest gig and my latest gig of becoming a writer and getting more exercise in my life now that I don't have the job uh, is my latest gig. And I am going to let Mel close out this episode because I know he's got to go post <laughs> a client. And so I'm trying to keep on time here. And so Mel, I'm going to let you close out this episode. Perfect. Thank you. So I recently celebrated my 53rd birthday last Tuesday, and I did a live Facebook video workshop where I detailed um, – I, I talked about three the, – the top three things that keep me in the best shape now at 53, things that I do now at 53, and make me feel better now was at 33. So here they are. Okay, number one, you want to eat for energy and eat for life. Keep your nutrition simple. Number two, get those muscles strong. Learn how to do it and make sure your form is, uh, is, is proper and not sloppy. Number three, make your fitness program as important as your job. Totally, totally, totally important that you do it. If you don't prioritize it that way, you're just not going to do it, okay? Uh, number four is uh, – I got a little here. No, one, two, three. Okay, number four is going to be challenge your fitness. All right, if you're currently working out right now and you've been doing the same thing, oh, I don't know, three months or more, I guarantee your body's bored with it. Get out there and sign up for some outdoor events like a 5, 10, or 5 or 10K or half marathon or go hiking and challenge your body. And uh, number five, we have, uh, oh, emotional intelligence. Don't be toxic. Make sure that your self-image is served by self-love with good self-language. That's really, really important. And uh, number six is make time. Absolutely make time for it. There's really no reason why you can't. And uh, and if you don't know how to do it, find help. There's a lot of good professionals out there, and I'm happy to help you anytime. So you can 
search me on Facebook at, under Mel Martin, and uh, you can see all the things that I do there, and I'm happy to help you. So there you go, Lynn. That's my closeout right there. There we go. There we go. Get get out there, and obviously I walk every single day. Obviously I didn't do enough today. So when I'm going to try and do tomorrow, make up for it. And we will see you guys next week. Hopefully this next week my life will kind of settle down with paperwork, but I don't think so. I I don't think so. The amount of the paperwork I had to do today just for this one project that I'm working on, yeah. The uh, vocational rehab, yeah, I love them, but they're very, very slow. Slow. Right. And when I, when the Jack Rabbit wants something, uh, yeah, patience, patience with. And so that, um, that happens to be with working out too. You, you want something, but your body doesn't want to give it to you, but, Yep, it will be patient. And so we'll see you guys next week, and thanks to you guys. And I'll, I'll be putting this episode up tomorrow, and so you guys can hear it and tell me what you think of it. And, yeah, let's go make this a great place and a great day. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Take Sounds care. good. Bye-bye.